welcome back to the Backyard Professor Chess Videos. We have a wonderful game by Bobby Fischer where he plays the Sicilian in a very interesting attack. And it, it's a standard, typical Sicilian until right toward the end. And then it really takes a jump. This is really quite remarkable for the 13-year-old. His opponent is Blake. And they played this in 1956. I'm going chronologically through Bobby Fischer's tournament games. So we're still in 1956. There's quite a few left. Not a whole lot, but a few. And then we, we begin to see the growth. We begin to see this is several months after his previous tournament. And he has been busy. He has been studying chess. It's, it's becoming more and more obvious the more we play his tournament games that he truly was a serious student of the game. He didn't have anything else to do as a teenager, so he literally spent his entire teenage years in chess. And it's beginning to show. It's really kind of cool how he does this. E5, he always presses that E5. Nice little push, knight to b3, of course, bishop e7, getting ready to castle. Now, they both castle, and this is usually done in the Sicilian. Always a good thing to castle early, and now he's pushing the f4. Nothing wrong with that. Bobby always seemed, at least in his early years, the moment they pushed for... Now, he's already had the pawn exchange here, but the moment the moment the e5 is pushed, the f4 is pushed. And the moment the f4 is pushed, Bobby always jumped the a5. And, and this time, Blake does the a4. Now, in the previous Sicilians that we've seen... Fisher hadn't met this A4 move yet. None of his opponents have played that, so far as we know in the record that, that I've seen. And now he does an interesting move, the bishop to E6. The main line is the, the main line here, rather than uh, bringing out his bishop, is putting the bishop to B4. So that's a little bit of an interesting difference from the main line for Fisher in his early years using the Sicilian. And the cool thing about this is, you guys, is we are going to have a lot of chances to see a lot of Sicilians. Fisher played the Sicilian a lot as black. F5, this is part of the point of pushing this F-pawn so early after they castle, is it limits the light-squared bishop it hits the bishop and it bumps him back down. However, oh, oh, I've got something wrong here. C5, D6. No, no, I don't. Bishop takes B3. So now this Sicilian is a little bit different than what we've seen Bobby do before. Rather than going back, he goes ahead and exchanges the bishop with the knight. He gives up his bishop pair, is what he does. So now he's got the knight or the uh, two knights and the bishop, and Blake has two bishops and a knight. That's the that's the difference. I'm evaluating it. The center, Bobby seems as developed as Blake. Uh, the game looks pretty even at this point. I think uh, Fisher has more than equalized at this point, for sure. Bishop takes B, B, C takes B3. We got to that. And now his knight comes to B4. So he is doing the main line, but it's he did a couple of intermediate moves, or in-between moves, I should say, and now he's on the main line with the knight at this point. Bishop g5. Whoops, not that one, this one. Bishop g5. 
a standard motif uh, when someone plays the Sicilian. And Fisher will put the rook to e8, not an open file, but it doesn't matter. It will be later, perhaps. He's just making sure. Bishop to f3. This move, uh, Muller had a, when he does a question mark and an exclamation point, it's, uh, it's interesting, but probably not the best move to make. And we shall see why. Fisher brings his queen out. Queen b6, put in check to the king. King h1, simple bump over. And now the rook to c8, grabbing the open file, hitting a target. Yes, it's supported, but he's still focusing on the file. That's one of our pillars. I'm just saying. Rook g1. Now, at this point, this is a question mark. And Muller uh, indicates, he says, uh, really... Sincerely, there's no reason for that at this point. The much better move is the rook over to c1. This file, in, uh, in a lot of the Sicilians, as well as uh, various queen pawn openings, truly the c file is usually grabbed or fought over. And that was a much better move. With, with his other rook move... Muller says Blake is just courting disaster. He deserved the punishment he got from this uh, simply because he failed in his development, is what he did. He moved a rook twice when really the other rook needed to be in this, and now Bobby immediately answers. He, he puts the queen right there on F2. And now it gets dicey quick. Really, uh, because of the way Blake played this, He's got no choice. He has, he has uh, no real moves otherwise. I, I mean, he could, he could attempt a somewhat artificial kingside attack. I that that wouldn't do anything for him. I don't think. I don't even know if I don't even know if if you did that. I don't know if it would even persuade you to bump a pawn. I'm not sure. If you bump the pawn, he's obviously going to just take the knight. I mean, he's there. He's developed. And that's usually what happens when you bump the pawn. Sometimes you want to and make him decide what do you want to do, back off or attack. Uh, but this, to, to make him do this and start exchanging pawns and opening up the king side, truly, I just, I don't think that's what would happen. So that's, that's really not much of an option. There is virtually, I mean, you know, you could, I suppose if you come to the center, now attacking in the center is a good outpost. Uh, attacking in the center, you could swap knights and bishops, I suppose, but that, that really does, yeah, see, Fisher's got that knight too. Yeah, that, that would be a, that really doesn't do anything for his game. It really doesn't. And the only reason I'm bringing all this up now, even at this point, because of the way uh, Fisher played, and you got to remember the rook on the file with the queen on the seventh like this, now the rook on the file becomes an issue. Uh, even, even that doesn't... Yeah... Here's what Blake did. The, the only reason I'm just kind of looking at a couple of maybe options, guesses, sort of analyzing a little bit, is because he immediately decided, oh my gosh, I've got to swap queens. This only favors Fisher. Here's the reason why. It favors Fisher because his position is better. And that's why. How do we know... Fisher's position is better. For one thing, the doubled pawns are firmly blockaded with the best of blockaders. Yeah, it's kind of over here, kind of like an island unto itself, but the knight is better placed than that knight. Okay, that's one small factor. Another small factor truly is the rook on the open file. The pawns, there are no isolated pawns, and his line of pawns here are nice. 
this side's pawns are beat up and he doesn't have the majority of pawns on this side. So Fisher's got him with the majority of pawns at this point. Also, the center is locked. Fisher appears to have a little bit more space in the center, but the king side, Blake has more on the king side. Fisher is going to be able to cooperate and coordinate his pieces better in an attack the main culprit is this undeveloped uh, rook, isn't it? Yeah. He's moved his other rook twice, and now look at what the cost is. The cost is, not only his position is less better, but now he loses the queen. He swaps the queen, but, I mean, technically he's losing the queen. Right? So is Fisher, of course. But, this position just doesn't seem to inspire us. And the reason why is because of what Fisher does next. Now you can see the about you can see why, you know, just a minute ago we said, well Fisher has the better position, a more winning position, because the knights can jump into an attack real easy from this position and they can coordinate together. Now now he pushes his rook to c1 and now look at this. Now a knight is on a central outpost. Notice the knight hop. That's fabulous. From this outpost to this one and this one is hitting a very important player and it's coming toward the king side being able to hit the rook. Yeah, I know the pawn is covering that square, but that could be a sacrificial piece. Notice how speedily, boink, boink, the knight got into this. That's really interesting to see. Now, bishop does go to c4. Earlier, he should... I didn't mention that in the note. The bishop should have been here on c4, earlier, and by this time, White has made another error. Before, even before this move, White should have exchanged here on f6. If, if you're gonna... The bishop here, uh, you need to exchange it. You need to exchange the knight with the bishop and get that done with. Don't just let it sit for too long, at least in this position. The bishop did get to c4, which was a more optimal square, but it's too little too late at this point, because now Fisher goes knight to g4, and here white resigned. And it is a, a stunning attack, because there's no slash and hack to it. There's just systematic development, systematic use of a knight on outposts and the bringing forward of the knight because of the way he played his king and rook. The next move is checkmate, right? A smothered mate. However, and Blake saw this afterward. Blake, res Blake resigned, but he saw, well, heck, I could have done h4 and that would have eliminated the smothered checkmate. So, there is your chess video of Bobby Fischer using an exquisitely elegant and truly simple attack in a Sicilian. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Join me in the next video for another one of Bobby Fischer's games. I don't think there's as many 1956 tournament games as there was 1955 that we have record of. We'll, we'll see, but... Uh, the thing to notice about this is Fisher is obviously jumping into chess with both feet already. And he is getting stronger and more subtle and even better at his attacks as well as defense. So anyway, be good, do fun, have pizza, <laughs> sleep all day, whatever. <laughs> Yikes. You know the routine. I'm getting boring now. I've got to come up with some kind of a new 
standard closing that's catchy and cool like, all right, see you later. <laughs> Actually, I will see you in the next chess video. Be good, do well, have fun. <laughs> Smile a lot. Be kind. You know, all the good stuff. Truly, it does come back at you. I'm not even kidding.